the FTC suing Microsoft to officially block its planned deal with Activision. A former FTC chairman calling it the boldest step yet by the Biden administration against a planned merger. Raises all sorts of questions about the future of deal making. Let's bring in our Kayla Tausche with more on the administration angle here. Julia Borston on what CEOs might now be thinking twice about trying to make a merger happen. Ladies, it's good to have you with us. Kayla, you first. I guess I can't say this is much of a surprise given the makeup of the FTC these days uh, and the fact that, you know, the administration has a reputation of, of fighting deals. Yeah, Scott, the top antitrust officials have uh, have not been uh, not left any question about whether or not they intended to pursue an aggressive approach on trying to challenge some of these deals. In recent congressional testimony in just the last few weeks, both the head of the FTC, Lena Khan, and the top antitrust official of the DOJ, Jonathan Cantor, have essentially said a version of the same thing, which is if we don't at least try to challenge them, then there's not going to be any changes to antitrust enforcement. But in that statement, or in that sentiment, you know, there is a there's a sense that, you know, they're essentially acknowledging that there's a chance that these challenges won't succeed. And certainly the track record uh, would illustrate that. In just the last three months, there have been four notable setbacks for the Biden administration where federal mm -hmm. judges sided with Illumina. They sided with United Healthcare. They sided with Booz Allen Hamilton and U.S. Sugar, essentially saying that the arguments that the FTC and the DOJ were making to argue that each of those four mergers would be anti-competitive essentially had no merit. Now, the administration is appealing those, but certainly you, you can't say that it's not a setback. Which is why, Julia, to Kayla's very point, Activision CEO Bobby Kotick, who you know well, uh, I believe, writing a letter to his employees today after the news saying, quote, I want to reinforce my confidence this deal will close. Uh, perhaps he has that confidence because of what Kayla just said. A lot of these deals which were first blocked, the, a judge rejected the, the FTC's challenge. That's right. I mean, we are seeing the FTC and the DOJ certainly take more swings in this department. And it does seem like that's about trying to force more legislative change in the antitrust um, field. So one thing that's interesting, and I just have to flag, Scott, is it's not just the FTC taking aim at this massive Microsoft Activision Blizzard deal, but also right now the FTC is in the midst of these hearings about a preliminary injunction it wants against Meta's acquisition of a $300 or $400 million startup in the VR space. So, of course, Meta, the day after it changed its name um, from Facebook to Meta, um, sort of stuck a claim and said, look, we're really committed to making gains in the VR space. And they acquired or they made a deal to acquire this company called Within. But what's so interesting in seeing the fact that the FTC is challenging this deal is they're saying there is no dominant player in the VR space yet, but we believe in the future that that could be meta. And so they're really looking for some different arguments right now to block deals. And so this is a little bit more experimental in terms of making these arguments, Scott. But if the FTC wins this one, that could have wide ranging implications, not just for whether or not meta can acquire companies, which has been an essential part of its strategy and a driver for its growth, but also for expectations across the industry not just in tech, but also in media. And one thing I'm hearing a lot of is the importance and the need for scale for a lot of these players to compete and some speculation. Hey, should there be um, a pairing between some of the assets of, say, um, a Paramount with the likes of, of some of these other media companies? Or would Apple be a good buyer for a Disney? Or who should Netflix be paired up with? All of the speculation mm -hmm. about deals is really about the value um, and what it takes to compete right now. And the, the truth is, is that none of those deals would be be possible in this more strict regulatory environment. Last to you, Kayla, it certainly seems like the winds of Washington are blowing against CEOs these days. And I'm also thinking about that Kroger Albertsons partnership, which is still hanging in there, which the FTC is taking a look at. And who knows if it ends up in a similar place? Yeah, and certainly, Scott, I mean, I think the mantra of the Biden administration when it comes to antitrust is the old adage that you miss 100 percent of the shots that you don't take. And I don't think that they're phased by any of the recent losses in court, uh, even though it's going to come down to actually the merits of the competitive arguments. And if the outcome is simply a chilling effect on mergers, I think they would consider that a success. It's also worth noting that there's a mantra that Senator Elizabeth Warren uses often that I've heard some members of the Biden administration use 
uh, privately, and that is personnel is policy. And the people that the administration nominates to some of these roles uh, are just as important as the actual policies that are coming out because they are the ones who are setting the tone on, you know, how those winds are blowing. Yeah. All right. Kayla Talshi, thank you so much. Julia Borson, you as well.